Hi everyone, welcome to Skilled Inspirational Academy. My name is Praveen. I am the CCNA trainer for this demo. I am working as a senior network engineer and I have uh, I have over 10 years of experience in networking. I am proficient in routing and switching protocols, security, and Wireshark. So everybody should have a question here. Can I learn CCNA online? And if I want to learn CCNA online, and why should I choose Skilled Inspirational Academy? I get it, but I'll tell you. So there are a bunch of learning you'll get in YouTube. There are a bunch of learning you you can get. You know there are multiple CCNA courses. Um, you know they give uh, training in the offline where you go to the computer centers and you you learn CCNA. But what makes a difference here? Uh, I, I would like to tell you this. This course is designed with a different perspective. Um, we designed the labs. Uh, every lab is combined with Wireshark. So whatever you learn, whatever you do, you see everything from packet level. And then again, why, why packet level learning is very important if you spend hours and hours of troubleshooting and if you spend hours and hours of troubleshooting and uh, finding the root cause of a problem and Wireshark is the quickest solution to find it. Believe me, it works like a magic when you learn Wireshark. So this course is designed with CCNE and Wireshark together. So that makes you more advanced and you can immediately apply your skills in your career. So the very first thing we are going to discuss here, the key principle of the networking is we should understand how a data is exchanged from one place to another place. So we all know that you, if you fire up your phone and if you type google.com, it reaches, yep, it, it all happens in the matter of milliseconds. But um, Maybe if we really want to be a network administrator, you should understand the three principles, components, and how exactly it works and how your data is exchanged from one place to another place, right? So to understand that, the very first thing is uh, we should understand the OSI model. I would say OSI is a set of protocols and we, we will uh, deep dive into every single layer here. So I'll give you a little background about OSI. OSI was introduced back in maybe 20 years back. I don't remember the exact uh, date when they, they introduced OSI, but now we evolved and moved. We are using TCP IP. But I would recommend, uh, I mean, even though TCP IP is being used now, so I would suggest for the beginners to understand in a very deep level and how exactly the packet exchange happens, I would definitely recommend the OSI model first. So let's get started. So here, the very first layer here is a physical layer. So we're going to discuss about that. So the physical layer transmit raw bit streams over the physical medium. What do you mean by that? So I am right in front of my computer now. Let me fire up my whiteboard for it. So if I take an example, I got my PC here. I open my browser. So in my browser, I'm going to type google.com. So what happens here? So my PC is connected back to my modem. We all know this, right? So we pay for the broadband. This is a broadband modem. Don't worry, guys. Even if you don't understand this, we will explain in the class. So this modem is connected back to your internet. Example, your ACT internet. It can be your geo internet. It can be the, this all ISP, internet service providers, right? You pay for them and you get your internet connection. Regardless of any device you connect it to your broadband, it, it can be a wireless phone, right? Your connection is like this. 
So you, your your wireless connection goes through this modem and it is moving as a data packet here. Yep, simple. So now I opened this, all this information are zeros and ones. It's all going inside the wire. I don't know. I have no clue what's exactly going on here, right? This is wireless medium. Again, zeros and ones. Over the air, it reaches the more broadband. So we call this as a physical layer. All are zeros and ones. I have no insights about that. So next comes the data link layer. So we are wrapping the data one by one. Let me jump back to my whiteboard here. So we got it. So to this point, we are sending the data over the wire. Let me delete this. The very first layer we got here is my physical layer here. all zeros and ones. Don't worry guys, we have a lab demo. You will understand exactly how these packets are exchanged. So this is called a data link layer. So what are the key value you are going to use here? It's a MAC address. Source MAC and destination Mac. So every device, even your mobile phone, your computer, every gadget has a unique Mac address. Example here is your computer. And your Mac address, is, that's actually a 48-bit address. But let's take for a simple example, it's all A's. All A is a MAC address of your phone. Let me tell you why we need the source MAC and destination MAC. So this is called data link layer. Next comes the network layer. Decide which path the data will take. It's routing, right? We have a lab. We'll see how every layer works there. Network layer. So here in the enterprise, this data link layer, we use switches. In the home broadband, again, the modem works as a router and switch, both. This is applicable only for broadband. So this is for enterprise switches. It forwards a packet based on the MAC address. Source MAC, destination MAC, all zeros and ones here. So here is the IP packet. So I want source IP and destination IP to move the packet. So source MAC is AA, destination MAC is BBB. So next comes the transport layer. I'll show you where we can see your transport layer. If you open your network and internet setting, there you go, you see your internet protocol here. Let me open this. When I open this network and internet setting, I landed here. Then from here, if I click on advanced network settings, and if I go to my Wi-Fi adapter, 
if I click on more adapter options, I can see my TCP IP stack. So if I go here, I can assign an IP address. So this is layer three. And TCP is a layer four. It's a transport, how I'm going to send my data. Transmit data using transmission protocol TCP. I'll explain again. There are two protocols used in the layer four. TCP and UDP. So TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. TCP is a reliable connection. If I send one packet from one device to another device, it's reliable. It, it expects an acknowledgement. If I am not receiving an acknowledgement, it's going to resend it again. So UDP is not like that. It, it's just keep dumping the packets. Example, if, if you're watching your YouTube and it is using UDP, your video streams. Whereas for, for your TCP, all your web browsing applications, uh, when you access your bank account, so all happens on TCP. So if, if even a single packet is lost somewhere in the middle, it's going to resend. So it has a retransmission mechanism for the packet delivery, so reliability. So that is called uh, TCP and UDP. That's a transport. I get it. When we do a lab, we'll understand better. Let's go back to the session layer. This maintains a connection and it is responsible for controlling ports and sessions. Example, here in my computer, if I open something, if I go to your website and I log into this website and until I log in and log out, it maintains my session. When, I, when did I log in and when did I log out? It monitors my session. That is called session layer here. session layer so it maintains my session my login my logout an example how long you're using a website so till you log in log out it's all managed by the session layer then comes the presentation layer the ensures the data is usable format and where data encryption occurs so what do you mean by that example if i open a website and I can see all my files here, right? If you actually, if, if you try to inspect what is inside, it's all in HTML formats, right? So how the HTML format is presented into a human readable format, it's all done by the presentation layer. Sorry for this. This is a presentation layer. It converts you my HTML to human readable format. There you go. I have no space here. Let me. Oh, this this is a application layer. Total seven layers. So what is the what is the use of application layer here? Example, I'm using a web browsing. Um, so I, I'm doing a web browsing here and uh, I want to download some files. And what is the protocol used? What is the application I'm using? Here, the application I'm using is web browsing, right? Example, if I make a... 
if I if I send some files, then then it is an FTP file transfer protocol. So all this runs on, on top of that application layer. So let's compare one by one with the lab. We'll understand better. So here, so all your cables, all your cables comes under your, your example, your, if you look at here, all these cables, RJ45 cables, your fiber cables, all falls into your physical layer. Then next is the data link layer. If you look at this, this is a switch. Let's again, go back again. So in this diagram, if you look at this, um, this is a switch connected back to the router, right? So this switch works on layer two. It, it doesn't understand or it doesn't um, inspect anything, whatever data you send. It just look for source Mac and destination Mac to send the information. That's unique. And let's see how this switch is going to learn the Mac address. For that, let, let me jump again to my whiteboard. Delete this. Let's take this. This is my switch. Sample here, connected a PC here. I connected a PC here at my home. You can imagine this is a modem. For example, but actually the modem works in a different way. The switch works in a different way. So here I got a MAC address AA. This is a MAC address BB. So my physical layer, I know it's just zeros and ones and it landed to my data link layer now. The switch works on data link layer. It just looked for your source MAC and destination MAC. That's it. It doesn't look for your IP packet. It doesn't look for what kind of application you are using it. Yeah, that's how the switch works. So if I want to send a packet from one place to another place, how exactly the switch process this? So the key components are the switch maintains a table called the MAC address table. So example, this is a port number, fast ethernet zero slash one, and this is fast ethernet zero slash two. And this PC has an IP address of 10.0.0.1. And this PC has an IP address of 10.0.0.2. And this PC is a layer 3 device. And this works on the network layer. Same here. PC and a router. Network layer. So I send a pack. I send a packet from ten zero zero one and ten zero zero two. I am just transferring a file, and I am trying to send an image file to this computer. So what happens here? I I I we discuss this in the physical layer. Sorry for that. Let me erase this. Physical layer, all zeros and ones. Then comes data link layer. And now I got fast ethernet zero slash one and the MAC address is AA. And fast ethernet zero slash two, BB. And this packet is going through the firewall. Sorry, through the switch. So this 10.0.0.1 is going to send an image file to 10.0.0.2, but it is going through the switch. So when a packet comes and hits here, the duty of the switch is to register the MAC address. So what is the MAC address of PC? Okay, it's going to update its MAC address table. Okay, inside my MAC address table, you're coming from AA and you're coming from the port fast ethernet zero slash one. This is my ingress port, the 
packet coming in and this is egress port it's going out of fast ethernet 0 slash 2 and your mac address is bb i know that now i can forward your frames from here to here so the packet comes here and goes over here so now i learned the mac address of pca and pcb that's it done so this is the this is the key role of a switch in a network. This is how it forwards the frame from one place to another place. So this is again a data link layer. So we use MAC address for it. And the PC, here an example. Layer three and using an IP address. What is that? So I got my source IP and destination IP address. Till layer three, done. So now I send an image file, but how do I ensure that I have sent the image file and it is not lost in the middle? So here comes the TCP IP. Let me erase this. So I'm sending this image file. Transport layer. TCP. I'm using a TCP and I'm sending an image file. So to understand that, I want to give a quick background about TCP, how exactly it works. Not very deep, but I, I want to give you an understanding of TCP, how it works, right? So TCP is a four tuple connection. So example here, it uses a random port number. This is like a physical port in the operating system, the TCP is designed in such a way that it, it's going to use a random port number. So there are two classification. One is a known port number. It's called well-known port numbers. Example, if your terminal session SSH, if you're trying to log in the remote, it uses a port number 22, that's well-known port number. So another one, it is decided by the operating system that is a random port number. That's how it sends the data from one place to another place. The operating system decides the range of the dynamic port range. So example here, my source IP is 10.0.0.1. My source IP 10.0.0.1, my destination IP 10.0.0.2, the same subnet. And my source port number is, as I said, it is a random example 2.0.0.1. And the destination is 3.0.0.1. So in the four tuple connection, I got my source IP here. My destination IP here, my source port number, and the destination port number. Source port number, DP stands for destination port number. So four tuple connection, one, two, three, four. And it, it doesn't stop with that. So I send this the very first time when it tries to establish a connection, it's going to send a TCP SYN. And then this computer will send back TCP SYN back. SYN acknowledgement, it's going to acknowledge my TCP SYN. For this acknowledgement, it will send a SYN act back. For it, first I send a SYN, it sends a SYN act back. Then again, for the SYNAC pack, I'll send a SYN again. 
So if I miss a packet here, it does a retransmission. Again, it's going to set. And again, it waits for the it sends a sin again. If I'm not receiving a sin act back, it's going to retransmit my data again. That's a reliable transfer protocol. So TCP use this retransmission mechanism. Sorry for that. It's using a retransmission. So we came to layer four. So then comes the session layer. So here we are just using um, a file. We are sending a file, but if it is a web browsing here in this example, okay, yeah, if, if I send an image file and the user has to look into it, right? So the sessions and since when I open the web browser here, the moment when I open the web browser, my session start. And then from my web browser, I stop my session, right? So it maintains all the sessions here. Start and stop. And application. Here I am using a FTP protocol to send a file, an example. And this is application layer. And I am using a FTP protocol here. So this is how it works. So now it is done and my packet arrived on the destination. It is going to decapsulate all this information back right from physical layer. Okay, so it reaches here and it looks for the MAC address. Okay, it's for me. So it's going to push out to the upper layer. It comes to the network layer. Yeah, this is for me. This is my IP address. And based on the port number, it's going to inspect my port number. And then it jumps back again to the session layer. Yeah, I am part of this session. And it's an FTP. Yeah, I download the image in the browser. Boom. That's how it works.